All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, finding the derivative of e to the x. And it is definitely the easiest derivative to remember, probably, since the derivative of e to the x is actually just e to the x. Okay? Again, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So it's kind of crazy, but you know we should have an understanding of what the e to the x graph looks like. Um, it passes through point um, one or point zero one, and it looks like this. So what that means is that you know any point that you choose, its slope is the same as its y value. You know, kind of crazy, but um, you know such is the case. That's how it works out. So now, you definitely could get a function other than just e to the x. For instance, you could get something like this. y is equal to, say, e to the um, 5x, and be asked to find the derivative of that. Well, the derivative of um, e to the 5x would be, um, what you do is, again, going back to here, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So in this case, the only difference is the 5x inside. We have a different inner function. So it's going to be a chain rule problem. But you work from the outside first, which is our e function. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So the derivative of e to the 5x will just be e to the 5x. Okay? And then you have to use the chain rule and then multiply times the derivative of the inner function, which is 5. So you might rewrite it as 5e to the 5x. So that right there is an example of you know, finding the derivative of an e to the x function. Okay? Um, and no matter what it might be, for instance, maybe you might have something like this, like h of x is equal to e to the negative x squared, for instance. Okay? So again, the way you take the derivative, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So the first step is the derivative of that is just going to be e to the negative x squared. But in this case, the inner function isn't just x, so you have to multiply times the derivative of the inner function, which is negative 2x. Now you usually see that written as negative 2x um, e to the negative x squared. So I just rearranged it, but it's the same thing. Okay. Uh, let's look at one more here. Say you had, for instance, um, y is equal to e to the, say, cosine of 3x. Okay. So again, the e is the outer part, so that's what you work with first. So the first thing I do to find y prime, the derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything. So in this case, it's going to be e to the cosine of 3x times the derivative of the inner function. Now, for that derivative, I have to use the chain rule again because of the 3x in there. But the, so what I'm doing next, well, I'm multiplying by the derivative of cosine of 3x. So if you just think of that separately, okay, you think the derivative, or you know, if you've just had the function cosine of 3x and you're asked to find the derivative of that, well, the derivative would be, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it would be negative sine of, keep your inner function the same, and then you multiply it times the derivative of your inner function. So, going back here, again, the, the initial step, what's the derivative of e to the cosine 3x? It's just e to the cosine 3x times the derivative of the inner function, so the derivative of cosine 3x, which is this, okay, which... Let me just put the 3 in front, or it is negative 3 sine 3x. So that right there is the derivative of that.